Hi, everyone, and congratulations on Sweet Tooth. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Jeff, how does it feel to see this on the screen, from page to screen? Yeah, it, it's completely surreal and amazing. You know, I, I did the book over a decade ago, and to now see it sort of come to life the way it has and to see people reacting to it the way they are and just latching onto these characters, um, it's, it's really special. Jim, how did you come across the comic? Um, I read it when it first came out um, in its initial run, so almost 10 years ago, I guess. Um, and uh, I fell in love with it then. I, I just love Jeff's voice and his style and, and his imagination and um, his appreciation of nature and the way that he was able to fold that into this story. Um, and it stuck with me for a very long time until the idea came up in about 2016 to try to turn it into a TV show. And Beth, this was all pre-pandemic. How, like, what did you make of this story before the pandemic? And now <laughs> what are you making of it now that it's been released during a pandemic? <laughs> well, before the before the pandemic, I, I honestly focused on the story to me was all about Gus and um and the beautiful hybrids that were created. I, I was lucky enough to see Jim's pilot uh, based on Jeff's uh, comic book and um, I just thought it was an incredible story of, about family, to be honest, of, about Gus trying to find his mom and, and um, you know, the pandemic stuff was obviously, obviously it's a big part of it. Um, but I never in a million years thought I'd be writing a show about a pandemic during an actual pandemic. So that was crazy. Anytime someone asked what I was working on, I would tell them. And as soon as I <laughs> said it's you know during a pandemic they were kind of like oh <laughs> um, <laughs> but so luckily we did not get luckily the response has been so positive because I feel like the show is really more about the hopefulness and um, since we all just went through such a, a horrific time. And Jeff how does it feel when you do find out it's going to be picked up and it is picked up by the likes of Robert Downey Jr and Susan Downey? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it, that's really cool. Obviously, I have a lot of respect for, for Robert Downey Jr. And, and everything he's accomplished. So just whenever you have someone of that caliber connected to your work, you, you can really take it seriously. And I knew that networks would take it seriously and and, uh, and that the work Jim was doing would be seen and, and heard. So it's, uh, I mean, it's great. It's really gratifying to have someone like that kind of latch onto your work and, and try to help bring it to life. It's It's surreal. It's cool. Then, Jim, you filmed the pilot pre-pandemic and then you go over to New Zealand and you're filming during the pandemic. How does that affect your preparations, your, your, the actual job? Because I'm assuming it would have changed a bit. Yeah, it did. I, I remember at the, right when we landed, um, I watched this speech by Anthony Lynn as the Chargers NFL football coach, and, and he told his players... Um, whatever we'd have to do this season, we have to embrace the chaos. And I kind of latched onto that idea. And we talked about that of like, you know, production is always hard and it always seems impossible. And now we're going to add into this, this incredibly unpredictable thing that production can't control, governments can't control. Like, we don't know what is going to come from this, um, but we just sort of have to be ready for whatever that's going to mean and find ways to um, get through that. And, and everybody did, everybody latched onto it. Um, fortunately, being in New Zealand, um, you know, they were in their own bubble during it. So that, you know, that made things easier. We still had to operate, you know, we still had to wear masks. We still had to do, um, you know, you'd still be at the monitor and you'd still have COVID safety people coming up and be like, can you guys separate? You're like, kind of no, I kind of, we need to see what's going on here. So um, there was a little bit of that, but it was actually like, I don't know, I think it brought everybody together knowing that we were doing something that touched on that as we were going through it in real life. If there's so many great lines going through this, but one that the narrator said, I loved. The boy broke his father's rules slowly and then all at once. Beth, do you remember the first time you were brave enough to start breaking the rules in Hollywood and the biggest payoff you've received? Oh, <laughs> A great question. Whoa. Um, that was a real started going this way. <laughs> I will say the first time I, I broke the rules was at my first internship. <laughs> um, and I lied about um, 
getting school credit. I went to University of Michigan and I wanted to uh, intern in Los Angeles on, and I ended up interning on the show, uh, so Barbara General Hospital. And in order so to get the intern, <laughs> in the internship, in order to get it, I had to say I was getting school credit. So I lied about <laughs> school credit and I got the internship. And I think that was my biggest payoff because I fell in love with Los Angeles. I fell in love with, it was the first time I was ever on set. Um, and it was the first time I was able to see production get made. And, and that's kind of what drew me into moving out after I graduated. So mm. I'm going to ask all of you that, all of you that <laughs> question, Jeff, you're next. When did you realize? Cause you know what? We, we're told you, you must abide by the rules. Don't break the rules. But when did you realize, you know, what? it's actually okay to break those rules. Um, I think for me, the one was, I mean, I was in school, I was in film school here in Toronto in my early 20s and at one point I just decided that I didn't want to do that anymore <laughs> so I stopped going to class and started drawing comics every day <laughs> and that really paid off for me so that was my <laughs> that's my the closest I have to that I think. <laughs> and Jim when were you brave enough to go this is the, this is the rule that I'm going to break um I mean it wasn't like one s small rule but I I broke in by making my own movies for you know DIY movies with friends um, that you know I spent a couple years after film school and I worked on movies I was a grip I was a PA I worked in art department I was an editor I was a storyboard artist and and I was trying to go that path and then at some point it was like this isn't going to work so um, Nick Dimitri my co-writer and I we, we um, just started making our own movies and kind of came in the back door and and that was what ultimately led to uh, a career getting to do this for for a living before I let you go, uh, I know there's never any guarantees and that's what we take from this series as well. But do you think mm -hmm. there might be a sweet tooth season two? Mm -hmm. uh, Beth, really, we're just, yeah, go ahead, oh, Beth. Oh, I would say, you know, we're just focusing on season one, obviously it just launched and we were still working on it a couple of weeks ago before, before it got out. We're, you know, we're hopeful for season two, but we don't have anything official yet 